You're listening to The Voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner with today's discussion. Norwegian right-wing extremist Anders Bering Breivik, who killed 77 people in his bombing and shooting campaign, says he was defending Norway from multiculturalism. Breivik has told the court the people he targeted at a political summer camp on Utøya Island, run by Norway's Labour Party, were brainwashed and actively upheld multicultural values. But strip away his extremism and narcissism, echoes of what he has to say can be found in conservative political thought. He stated that he feared Norwegians would become a minority in their own country, and it's a fear we've seen in British media and at the heart of the French presidential election. Joining me is Omar El Hamdoun, the president of the Muslim Association of Britain. Kevin Carroll is co-leader of the English Defence League. Aslak Siramaya is a former socialist politician and author in Norway. And Roger Griffin is a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University. <laughs> Omar El Hamdoun, what Breivik did was horrendous, but it's something that we do hear often in British media. Well, I, I don't know if uh, you can compare the two exactly. I mean, what Breivik did was horrendous. Uh, first of all, can I start by, by sharing our sympathies and uh, condolences to the victims and the, the families who have suffered, and they are, in fact, repeating their suffering by having to go through the trial again. Uh, so our thoughts are with them. Uh, what Breivik did was obviously the fruit of uh, far-right extremism and it's tragic that it has reached such a stage and obviously in Britain we've not reached such a situation but if things are not controlled, if things are not dealt with properly, uh, we could probably see things spiralling out of uh, control in a similar way. Kevin Carroll, co-leader of the English Defence League, we do hear this quite often in British media and some of it is echoed in right-wing ideology, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's, we're not right wing. Uh, we're not right. We're not far right, I should say. Sorry. And as the gentleman said before, not only could you see this sort of thing spiraling out of uh, concern, it, uh, out of hand, it has. I mean, we have seven seven. Uh, unfortunately, um, this far right thing that people keep talking about, it's uh, it's it's not it's not a real threat in the UK. The, the main threat in the UK is from Islamists, as we see by seven seven and terrorist atrocities as such as that. The main threat is Islamists, Omar al Well, I mean, was, was Breivik an Islamist? Was he, was he a Muslim in disguise? I mean, that, that's, that's so outrageous to say. We're, we're talking about Brev, right. Breivik, who has killed... Breivik's not from the far right. Yeah, but he, this is a man who's right. killed 77 people and in yeah, front and of the whole world. He's a monster. And, he, and he's a monster. Yeah, but is he an Islamist? Is he, is he this Islamist? No, but you're talking about the threat... The, 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 this, this talk about the far right, we're, we're not far right the, as English Defence League. And as you talk about these things, if they're not checked and not kept in control, the, uh, it's already out of control in, in Great Britain because the threat from Islamism is already on our doorstep and we've had terrorist atrocities already. I want to go to Roger Griffin. You're a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University. You have your own thought about uh, Breivik's state of mind and his extremism, don't you? Yeah, I do. But before I get on to that, could I just uh, comment on the, the two previous speakers? Uh, Ravik represents a very extreme form of action based on a particular fanatical worldview. I mean, there are widespread concerns about identity in Europe and about cultural mixing and, and balances between faith communities, etc. They are not all right wing and they're not all extremists. But could I also say to Kevin that though you're absolutely right that 7-7 uh, Seven -Seven was, a, was a, a monstrous act by is, Islamist uh, extremists, there have been a number of plots. There is a far-right presence which occasionally produces terrorist plots. And though it's not part of a, the same sort of global organization as Al-Qaeda, we shouldn't minimize the fact that there is a very continued tradition of, of right-wing extremism, even if it's a very small minority. So, uh, minuscule uh, in Great not, Britain. Minuscule. Yeah? It's not even a threat in Great Britain, really. The main threat in, in Great Britain and Europe, I believe, is Islamists. Islamism. Um, American intelligence agencies have already told British intelligence agencies that the main, like my hometown of Luton Town, is the epicenter, the hub for all the majority of Islamist activity on the UK and Europe mainland. Kevin, um, you, you say oh, you're, right. you're you say you're scared of, of Islamism. What what is it that you're scared of? Well, it's 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 
the whole Islamification of the UK, and it's spreading through Europe. I mean, where I'm from, I don't know where, where any of these other gentlemen live, but in my hometown, the, the, and, and in other towns and cities in the UK, there are uh, Islamic enclaves, the ghettos, where, where, where the, the rise of extremism from Islamists is just on the increase. It's, it's uh, becoming a, a major, major problem in this country. Where are we seeing it in, in the UK? Can you give me an example? In Luton Town, in Bradford, in Oldham, in Blackburn, in London, Tower well, Hamlets. What specifics, though? What, what is it that concerns you about the Islamification? Well, we've got the, we've got the call, constant, constant calls for Sharia law. We've got hun over 100 Sharia law courts already established in the country. They've already been outlawed by the European Court of Human Rights as totally, totally incompatible with Western secular law. And it's, it's just on the increase. We've got extremist groups like MAC and Islam for UK. We've got um, lots and lots of Islamist groups that are constantly campaigning for Sharia law and actively pursuing it. It's just incredibly, it's just incredible. You, you, you couldn't make up. It's not unless you live in these towns and cities that you're constantly experiencing it. And if you don't live in these towns and cities where we live as working class people... I, I want to give um, Omar El Hamdou the right of reply here. Now, Omar, you speak for moderate Islam. That is the majority force. However, we cannot deny there's a, a fringe minority here within the Muslim community that have anti-democratic views within Europe about, about the role of Islam in Europe, and they're intolerant of multiculturalism. And this is what Kevin's scared of. Well, I mean, this, this exists with all different spheres and whole spectrum of whoever is present. I mean, wh whichever ideology you have, you're going to have, uh, it's prone to extremism. So, I mean, uh, Brevik was uh, an extremist in his own right. He's not a Muslim, he's not an Islamist, but the, the amount of extremism extremism that he's done or the massacre that he performed is actually a fruit of the ideology of, of extremist right wing uh, whether he calls himself as Christian or whether he considers himself just a, a political activist whatever he considers at the end of the day he's an extremist and yes in Islam there are extremists and we are first to renounce uh, you know ex uh, acts by extremist Muslims we don't terrorist attacks since 9-11 does Leymar carry on? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, at the end of the day, we have to work against extremists, and whether it's extremist Muslims, but in this case, we can see that the far right have produced extreme, uh, extremists, and the fear, I think, what we should, we should be tackling is that his claim that there is, he's part of a network. And this network could very much be uh, pr present in Britain, uh, and people uh, of the likes of the EDL may be actually uh, nurturing this. He's not part of a network. He's not connected to the English Defence League, and, and he, he's not part of a network. Well, he, he says he was. He, he he's says not, that he's he not has. Part of a network with the English Defence League. He's totally denied any links with the English Defence League. On Friday in court, he said he completely disassociates himself with the English Defence League because we are anti racist anti-fascist, anti-violent, and our differences are irreconcilable. That is definitely so, something that he, that he has said in court. He, he, he said, said he hasn't got Friday, a connection to the EDL. he said on page 1438 of his papers. Yes, well, he does refer to you as, as having taken some of his, probably the scaremongering, that you go around scaring the whole British society. You are scaring people. He, You're scaring no, people of Islam a threat. Islam is not scaring people. Islam is scaring the whole of Europe. And <laughs> oh, the whole of Islam is scary. Jump in there, please? This is where I think distinctions are important. There's a very, very grave danger that we slip from Islam into Islamism. They are different things. Now, there, there is a rise of Islamic presence in Europe. That is not to be denied. And that has brought about major changes to the makeup of British society and to British culture. There is also an extremist form of Islam, which is Islamism, which does not tolerate and does not want to tolerate the host culture because it regards it as infidel, as not as not compatible with Islam. Now, that, there's a very small minority of Muslims who actually believe that. The call for Sharia law no, is a very interesting a minority, case. No. Just let um, Roger but, finish but his the point. Who are, the people who uphold Sharia law aren't necessarily is, is Islamist terrorists, and we've just got to make uh, distinctions between various things which can very easily lead to a whole load of muddy categories being being chucked together here. You cannot run a 7th century dogma, like the Sharia law, you can't run parallel in, and, and expect it to operate in a 21st century no, you can't. Let's right. go to but, but Aslak uh, Siramaya. You're a former socialist politician and author. Um, from the Norwegian perspective, is Islam seen as a threat to Europe? No, it's not seen as a threat to Europe of, uh, I guess, 99% of Norwegians. Uh, and it is not such a threat to Europe, nor to Norwegian society. 
But this political paranoia that uh, Mr. Carroll of the English Defence League he demonstrates. Not paranoia, my friend. It's, it's reality. It's reality. It's this Kevin, let, let, let Aslak speak first and then you can reply afterwards. Um, Aslak, continue. This political paranoia is unfortunately not something that exists only in the head of Anders Breivik. Uh, when you listen to what he said in his political explanations in court, 90% of what he was saying was recognizable. Recognizable for Norwegian public debate and recognizable for English, French or other European public debates. And recognizable for organizations like English Defence League. He has stated several times that English Defence League is one of his, his major inspirations. He even tried to form a sister organization of English Defence League in Norway. That doesn't make English Defence League responsible for his acts, of course, but the political the political alliance, the political relationship between organizations as English Defence League and Bergenberg is unfortunately very clear. And we have somehow lured ourselves in Europe to believe that Terrorism is only something Muslims can do. And this right-wing extremism we have seen now must be faced politically in actually addressing the paranoia that creates it. And I think then we have to start with uh, addressing these things that English defense leaks are saying. Is it so that Islam is threatening Europe? No, it is not so, and there's no evidence for this. A reminder that you're listening to the voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner. Joining me is Omar El Hamdoun, the president of the Muslim Association of Britain. Kevin Carroll is co-leader of the English Defence League. Aslak Siramaya is a former socialist politician and author in Norway. And Roger Griffin is a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University. Kevin Carroll, co-leader of the English Defence League. Now, we're saying we can't tarnish the whole Muslim community. But from your perspective, is that what's happening with Breivik? We're trying to tar tarnish all right-wing people with moderate views of immigration from your perspective with the same brush and saying that these types of views are responsible for his actions. Anders Breivik was a lone wolf. Um, there, there hasn't been anybody else like Breivik. He was a lone wolf. That's a one-off. He was a monster. But if you, com if you want to compare Breivik to the, to the terrorist atrocities committed by uh, Muslim terrorists, Islamists, across the world, he is minuscule. He's nothing compared to the, the, the attacks and the violence. I mean, 18,000 terrorist attacks since 9-11. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about the right thing here. You should, we, we should be talking about the, the Islamic terrorists who are anti-Christian, anti-Semitic. You know, they're, they're actually doing it as we speak. You know, there's, there's a constant, constant pressure from Islamists all over the world. And not, they're not yeah, but we should also, Kevin, surely, shouldn't we also be making it, giving you the chance to distinguish between it, those extremists who are abhorrent and are a danger to democracy and the vast majority of Muslims living in Europe who are not a danger to democracy and are very good citizens and, and contributing to democracy. And what I'm worried about is that when the EDL stages a, a protest, against the Islamization of Europe or, or England, it calls out of the woodwork a lot of Muslim extremists, which actually then polarizes and demonstrates this idea of a clash of civilizations. And it's no, a very no, dangerous sure, way we, of doing we politics. Because of Islamists. We, we didn't just wake up one day and decide to become a defense league and go up against militant Islam. We were formed because of Islamic extremism. We are a symptom. We are not the problem. The, the symptom is, is uh, a response to an action by Islamists in our country. And they are, they are actively campaigning to impose Sharia law. I mean, everybody's... I mean, Anders Breivik was a monster. That's plain and simple. That's a fact, right? But he was a one-off. But you don't want to talk about extremism. The same as yours. You might find moderate Muslims, but there's no moderate Islam. Islam wants to dominate. Sure, Aslak, well, no, you, you wanted to say something. No moderate Islam in Omar. This is just not true that, that, that all, all Muslims want to dominate. This is just, I didn't not say true. all Muslims want to dominate. I said Islam wants to dominate. I said you may find moderate Muslims, but there is no moderate Islam. All right, I want to go to Professor Roger Griffin. What seems to be happening with the right wing is a question of identity here. The is the centre ground of all faith and politics. But do you think the right are taking this question of identity? There are genuine issues about identity and uh, and and it is extraordinarily uh, naive to think that you can have a major transformation of Europe that such as has occurred since 1945 with mass immigration throughout Europe and the e existence of a growing number of people who are not part, a part of the European 
uh, Christian or post-Christian background without there being tensions. I mean, it would be not, it would be extraordinary if there weren't responses like the National Front in France or or the the League in 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 Italy. Or uh, but the fact is that the centre ground. For example, let's just take Britain. The the main the leading parties are so frightened of talking about race and identity and multiculturalism in an intelligent, uh, historically grounded way that it has left a sort of vacuum which can be exploited by people on the far right because they seem to be the only people. The BNP, the EDL, and they I I, I do agree they are different parties. UKIP and their equivalents throughout Europe. They seem to be the only and, people and, addressing these important and, issues. We are not racist, and we're not. We're, we're, you can't talk about us in the same in the same breath. If if these issues are not addressed, because Christianity is being uh, marginalised all over the UK and in Europe, it's, it's under constant attack all over the world. And because of this, people are, are not addressing the problem. There will be more Anders Breivik if if the issues are not addressed, because people feel that they, they are being put back to the wall and they've got nowhere to turn. There was an elephant in the room and everybody is pretending not to see it. Sure, let's There's go to Aslak Meyer. You're a former problem. socialist politician and author. Um, Aslak, do we have the same kind of vacuum um, in Norway? Uh, we do have an ongoing debate on immigration uh, and we have many of the same rooms as in England, but we do not have uh, the same extreme class system as England has and we do not have the poverty as you find in Luton, in Leeds, in Birmingham and other uh, English cities and suburbs. So the conflict has not been that extreme as you found in England, as you'll find in France, and I think will grow in Italy and Spain, Greece and other countries as the European social crisis moves on. And I think that uh, if I'm trying to be serious with uh, Mr. Carroll of the British Defence League, which is quite difficult, I must admit, uh, considering his paranoia. But if you're trying to be serious of what he's saying, the issue... Let, let the issue, Aslak continue. Issue, Aslak, the carry on. Issue, the, the issue at stake is not uh, how many Muslims are there in your neighbourhood, but how many jobs are there in your neighbourhood. And when you have at the same time as you have in England uh, uh, Prime Minister Cameron uh, and Prime Minister Blair before him destroying the welfare system and actually creating a society where you live outside of society on the dole and at the same time have mass immigration, you see uh, that you will ad some people will address this at Islam. And you have, of course, as, uh, as Professor Griffiths you can't change society as much as Europe has been changed after the Second World War without having tensions. But the question is, what will you do with this situation? And some people, and a growing uh, number of, uh, of Europeans, intellectuals and people like uh, Mr. Carroll, uh, they want to use the situation to tell us that we are living in the Crusades. We are living in an age where there will be an eternal war between Islam and Christianity, and this war we must fight. And I think that is what Mr. Carroll has in common with Anders Bain Brave. Um, can we? Well, I want to go to Omar Al Hamdoun, the, the president of the Muslim Association of Britain. Now, we're, we're concerned, as Roger says, by this vacuum in which, um, as Aslak has just said, is this ongoing fight from the rights perspective between right wing and also Islam. First of all, can I say, I mean, it's, 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 um, to a certain extent, it's ridiculous to distinguish between Islam and Muslims. A Muslim is someone who lives by Islam, and, and, and a proper Muslim is someone who live, abides by, by Islam. Now, what, what, uh, what we have is a, is a problem. Muslims, yes, we have extremists. There are a very small minority, but we're there. As Muslims, we are denouncing this ex extremism. The equivalent of Muslim extremism is people like the EDL. They are the equivalent of Muslim extremism. And I think British society as a whole is, denou is denouncing these the, 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 the EDL. The EDL. No, no. Let, let, let Omar exactly. continue, Kevin. Kevin but I'll come to you straight afterwards. The, the, e, the EDL. Kevin, Kevin, I'll come to you straight after Omar's finished. The way. We, we, are, we, we didn't murder anybody and we haven't murdered anybody. Kevin, Kevin, we'll come to you straight after Omar. Yes, but people like Brevik are actually, they are nurtured and inspired from your kind of ideology and your kind of thought. And the way that you carry on with scaremongering people, you will produce more extremism. Yes, you are scaremongering people. You are scare, scaring people because you are not giving people... Even your association, even the you, MAB, that was founded in 1997 by Kamal el -Aboui, And he, at the time, was the European spokesman for Muslim Brotherhood. So, and what's, what's that got to do with it? 
Well, What's you're talking about Islamism. Muslim, Muslim, it, Muslim Brotherhood in, in Egypt is now a, a, a political party and it's, it's working in the democratic uh, uh, democratic situation. So, in fact, it's not only it's not only something that that is there, but it's in the mainstream Middle Eastern politics, which Britain has to, the British government uh, w- w- has to deal with. So, so what re- what kind of reference is that? I mean, doesn't, doesn't, so, so what you're saying is you, you're trying to tell me that um, Islam is pro democracy. Well, of course. I mean, you keep scaring people about Sharia law. Sharia law. Do you think that some 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 people are going to paratroop out the sky and just impose Sharia law in the House of Parliament? Sharia law. No, if, but we already have a hundred Sharia law. law yeah, but these, these the, this is exist. this is the same as what you have with Christians. You have with Jewish. No, no, yes, no, you do. Listen, we're, you, this is a Christian country. You have. Well, I live in a Christian country. You have, Kevin, that, Kevin, let's let, let him finish. Uh, let him finish right. his point, Kevin. There are there are people. There are the, the Jewish uh, community and the the uh, certain parts of the Christian community who choose to. They have their special tribunals where they can go and they can discuss matters and these sharia courts that you're referring to they are to do with personal law people two muslims a man and a wife or two people business part they go because they want uh, independent uh, tri- uh, tri- tribulation uh, independent you know uh, mediation so they sharia go to the sharia all right let's guys let's bring this back onto track uh, kevin kevin let's bring this back onto track there's, there's lessons that we have to learn here from the from the brave Eight tragedy how to deal with multiculturalism and how do we get there and how do we stop him from doing that again? Well, multiculturalism um, hasn't failed in Britain. Multiculturalism has, wor- multiculturalism has worked in Britain. It's Islam has failed to integrate. You're, you're trying That's to make it problem. fail. No, Islam has failed to integrate because they've, they've self-segregated and they, they, uh, they only want to be amongst themselves. They, they, they haven't integrated in England and this is, what's, this is what the problem is. It's called All right, Roger, Roger Griffin, Professor of Modern History, well, Oxford Brooks. Um, how do we deal with multiculturalism now and what do we learn from Breivik? Let, let, let's, let's use this conversation as an example of what can happen. I mean, we've got some very different opinions here. But what I'd like to say to Kevin is that actually, Kevin has got a lot in common with Omar. You both condemn extremist, Islamist Muslims who want to impose their way of uh, their traditions, their faith on the whole of Britain. And what should happen is a proper a debate within the mainstream society, an intelligent debate which has been avoided largely by the mainstream parties, which take on board the sort of fears, and I don't think they're just paranoid, but Kevin and his colleagues have, and so that we can actually move liberalism and tolerance on. There is a genuine moderate tradition within Islam. It, it has to become a strong tradition and marginalize extremists. I do not think that Kevin's EDL is neo-Nazi or, or, or violent, but it can very easily be misinterpreted as fermenting violent extremism and polarization. And I think this sort of discussion, we shouldn't end up hating each other. We should end up wanting greater debate and more understanding about each other's point of view. And so what I'm saying, what we should do with the Breivik affair, and it's happening all over Europe, is to use it as a catalyst, a stimulus for more intelligent debate of the real issues about faith, identity, society, and the sort of future we want, separately and communally, then we can't just allow uh, extreme or simplistic opinions to take over the debate. A reminder that you're listening to the voice of Russia in London. I'm Daniel Sinner. Joining me is Omar El Hamdoun, the president of the Muslim Association of Britain. Kevin Carroll is co-leader of the English Defence League. Aslak Siramaya is a former socialist politician and author in Norway. And Roger Griffin is a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University. <laughs> Um, Aslak Mayor, uh, you're from uh, the former socialist politician and author. Do you think that the liberal ideology in Western Europe has spawned a monster like Breivik? No, I think oh, basically <laughs> what spawned the monster like Breivik is uh, right-wing extremism and Islamophobia. This is where he has found the soil where his extremism has grown. This is where he spent his days. This is where he spent uh, his debates and found his facts or facts that is uh, in curses because they're not facts. 
But I do agree with Gifford at one point, and that is that we have to have a public intelligent debate where we address social is- issues and questions concerning integration, religion, uh, and culture. But if we are going to have such a debate, we have to start with the actual facts. And the problem with having the debate of today is that, yes, the liberal left and some of the liberals won't do this debate because they don't live in areas where you have immigrants. They don't live around Muslims, and they, don't, they just don't want to be political, uh, non-political correct somehow but but the other thing is that the extreme right has made it their way of doing debate to uh, uh, come with facts that are untrue to and then base debate on this so you have to start the debating on the premises that 18,000 terrorist attacks well let let us continue Kevin Kevin we're going to go around the table I'll I'll come to you straight afterwards Um, Aslak Aslak, please continue can can I please can I please continue yes please Uh, go ahead the the, the thing I want to say is that one example of this which makes it very difficult for me to debate this is that we have a fact that is that Anders Beng Breivik has killed 77 people uh, in the name of the right wing of the fascist of the English Defence League or whoever, uh, saying that he is ju- uh, he is uh, doing his political uh, thing based on this ideology. He is co- comparable to Al Qaeda. He compares himself to Al Qaeda. He's an extremist within within ideology. But English Defence League and many of uh, Mr. Carroll's compatriots all over Europe does not want to debate this. So uh, I think if, if, if we're going to sort this out, we have to be able to discuss this without what I call a paranoia, without the idea that we always have to say, discuss how big the problem of Islam is. Sure, I, I want to I come, come, come to Kevin um, and also uh, to Omar before we, we've, got, we've only got a short amount of time left. Um, so Kevin, if you could keep it short, how do we deal with multiculturalism and what do we learn from Breivik? Well, multiculturalism has, has worked in the UK. The only, the only section of the community that hasn't worked, because it hasn't integrated, is Islam. And whilst Christianity is under constant attack... Um, you, and, and, uh, but what, what do we learn from Breivik? How do we, how do we stop uh, someone like well, Breivik? Unless, unless these issues, because there are real, serious, genuine concerns and fears by the non-Islamic community in Europe and in the UK, unless these fears are seriously addressed, you will see more Breviks. But this is a reality. People need to wake up and smell the coffee here because um, Islam, Islamists, are on the rise. It's not a fallacy. They are actually doing it. No one in the English Defence League or has, has murdered anybody. No one from the... No All one right, I'm, I'm going to go to Omar now because we're coming right up to the end. Um, Omar Hamdoun, um, final word on this. How do we deal with multiculturalism and what do we learn from Breivik? I mean, from, from a Muslim perspective, I, I, I'm a Muslim, I'm British Muslim, I'm here. I'm, this is not, I'm not an immigrant, I'm here. To, I'm, and British Muslims are here to stay and they feel that they definitely have... They are part of the solution. They can give a uh, lot of solutions to society. To say that well, Muslims... To, to no, say no, that no, Muslims have no, not no, integrated no, is... Is totally silly. Muslims, there's Muslim MPs, there's Muslims in the House of Lords, there's Muslim doctors, lawyers, so everywhere on every level. In every, finish, please. in every aspect, Sharia law is not like you want to make it out as if it's just one thing. Sharia law is a whole number of systems. There's lots of systems where, in fact, uh, one aspect, for example, financial system would have not allowed us to come into this economical crisis that we have, where interest is actually allowed to. So what is it that we collapse. need to do now, then, Omar? We need to. I think, like the, like the uh, Professor Griffith mentioned, is that we need to really have proper discussions with without scaring people and try to really work to proper solutions to get rid of all types of extremism from all spheres and from all backgrounds. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you to all of my guests. Omar El Hamdoun is the president of the Muslim Association of Britain. Kevin Carroll is the co-leader of the English Defence League. Aslak Siramaya is a former socialist politician and author in Norway. And Roger Griffin is a professor in modern history at Oxford Brookes University.